Hi. All right. Did you guys need a map or newsletter? No, thanks. I know where I'm going. Okay. Have a good day. See ya. If you're going to Grand Teton National Park, you also need to know where you're going to get the best photos of the Tetons to show off to your friends and family. Hey, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to cover the eight best places to take photos at Grand Teton National Park. So let's get started on the best places to take photos at Grand Teton. Number one is Schwabacher Landing. This is a really popular spot. It's really one of the best spots because you get down near the Snake River. You'll actually stand right next to the Snake River. There's a little dirt road that heads down to it. You walk out a couple hundred yards or something and you get to the, the Snake River and there's trees down there. There's some beavers have dammed up the river. So there's wildlife and ducks and birds. And you have the mountains kind of framed in with pine trees around it. It's a really, really beautiful area. It's famous for photography and for artists. When you go there, you're going to see a lot of other people ready to take photos with their tripods and all that. The tip for Schwabacher Landing and for most of these is to take these pictures early in the morning. The sun rises on the Tetons and so you really kind of want to try to be there at sunrise. Number two, the Snake River Overlook. This overlook is famous because the famous photographer Ansel Adams was commissioned by the government to take some pictures of the West and he took a very famous black and white photograph from this angle of the Tetons that really helped to make them, to, to make this a more popular park. This was back in the 1940s when he did this. Well, you can stop at the same spot and get basically the same picture uh, as Ansel Adams did. There's some trees that have grown up, so it looks a little bit differently, but still you get basically the same amazing shot. Number three is Mormon Row. Mormon Row is a little historic district in the park. There was some homesteaders here before this became a national park. So the reason why this is a famous spot is because there are some barns and houses there. The Molten Barn is the most famous, probably like the most famous barn in the world. This is a photo op where you can get the barn in the foreground and the Tetons behind it. It's a very famous photograph, has all sorts of Western feeling to it. So the Molten Barn and, the, and Mormon Row is a really big one. Number four is Oxbow Bend. So people really like this one because you again have the Snake River there in the foreground and you can get the reflection of the Tetons in the background. This is on the northern end of the park so the angle is a little bit different and you'll be surprised when you visit Grand Teton that uh, the angle of the mountains that you see it from changes the the look and nature of them so this in particular what you can do is you can get the image of Moran Peak in the background which is not part of the cathedral group which is the main part of the Tetons that that you think of it's it's just north of the cathedral group so it's a slightly different view and a really popular area Oxbow Bend Number five is Taggart Lake. So this is a beautiful little hike to get to Taggart Lake. It's I think a mile and a half each way. It's about a three mile round trip hike. And you hike through a variety of different looks. So there's river and stream that goes by. You'll see some big glacier, glacial boulders along the way, aspens, pines. It's really a, a a beautiful and then you'll have a lot of wildflowers and berries you'll even see some horses on the way I mean there are a lot of great photo spots for Taggart Lake and then you get to Taggart Lake and you have the lake in the foreground and the cathedral group of the the mountains in the background Taggart Lake is awesome number six anywhere you can find wildlife. So there are wildlife all over Jackson Hole Valley, which is the valley that sits right underneath the Teton Mountains. And if you can find some wildlife, any picture with the wildlife in the foreground, just like this one here, and the Tetons in the background is gonna look awesome. And so uh, any, I've done another video on where you can find wildlife at Grand Teton, the best places to find the wildlife. So I'll put a link to that in the description here, put a card up above, so check that out. Number seven is anywhere that you can find wildflowers. So there are some hikes and trails, I've already mentioned Taggart Lake, but there are plenty of places in the valley that you can find 
wildflowers and you can get a picture of the flowers with the Tetons in the background. I'll just give you one, maybe the best one here is Pilgrim Creek Road. Pilgrim Creek Road, which is on the northern end of the park. Great spot for wildflowers in the spring. And when I say spring, I mean at this high of elevation, you're still gonna have wildflowers in June and maybe even July that you can find to take pictures with the Tetons in the background. Plus that Pilgrim Creek area is an area where bears are. So you might even see some bears up there as well. Number eight, anywhere. <laughs> really anywhere in the park. Uh, one of the most amazing things about Grand Teton National Park is that you have this, this huge mountain range that just kind of juts up out of this very flat valley, the Jackson Hole Valley. So you can you get a good look at the Tetons from anywhere in the valley. You really do, and you'll find just great spots all over the place to take pictures. And again, I mentioned that the angle that you see them from really changes the look of them quite a bit. And so just as you drive into the park the first time, you'll just be amazed like these mountains are just right there in front of your face and again you'll be able to see them from anywhere in the park in the jackson hole valley it's just a great uh great photographer's park this is really a big one now uh, i visited in one year about seven years ago i visited 20 national parks in one year it was amazing i drove all over montana colorado south dakota utah and saw 20 national parks and each time i had my little iphone four I think at the time and I would take these pictures of these amazing places and I would just say how come I haven't bought a camera next time I'm buying a camera uh, and next time I'd go I hadn't bought the camera yet of course I wasn't planning on going to 20 in one year it just happened finally the next year I got my act together and I bought I bought a nice camera to take photos with now I'm not a professional photographer so I don't want to uh, make it sound like I am I'm just an average Joe and really uh, what I really just wanted is a nicer camera that's easy to use to take nicer pictures with that I can print off and put up on the wall. And I've done that with some sense. I have a picture of maroon bells in Colorado that I've printed off and framed and put up in my boy's room. So I just wanted a, a nicer camera. So this is the Canon Rebel SL1. Now this is a little bit older now, so I'm actually in the market now for a new camera, but the, the, the Canon Rebel 2, is a really popular choice. Um, the Nikon D3500 is also a popular choice. These are like the best SLRs, DSLRs for, for an intro person like me. I don't want to spend, you know, two or three thousand dollars on a camera. So these are about 500 bucks. They're doable to get you started, to get you nicer pictures so you don't have that regret like I had. Um, now, some so photographers out there, you hardcore photographers are going to say, the DSLRs are old school, they're old technology, and, and I get that. This is more for, for beginners, but they're, the new technology is mirrorless cameras. And so I'll, I'll put a link to what I've researched out to be kind of the best beginner uh, mirrorless camera in the description here, which is a Sony. So again, I'm, this video is kind of for people who are not looking to become professional photographers and break the bank just to kind of have something nicer that they can not screw it up and get some good pictures of the Tetons for their trip. So uh, check that out in the description and thank you so much for watching. I've got plenty of other videos on Grand Teton National Park. Check them out. Appreciate it. You have a good day. We'll see you next time.